Hi, welcome. Come on in. How are you doing today? Good, I'm glad to hear that. I know this can be a stressful time of year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you were able to uh, make it in to this appointment in the midst of all the chaos. And I see here on your file that you're in for a little bit of a special uh, sort of appointment today. Um, do you know exactly what we're going to be doing? Okay, that's totally fine. Um, essentially, I know you know the background, but most of what I'm going to be doing today is tapping, massaging, touching, everywhere from kind of your neck up. Um, we're checking to make sure that there aren't any irregularities related to your fall. And I know that you've already had a cranial nerve exam, um, but sometimes if there's a little bit of discrepancy in your results or just something that we want to double check is okay, um, they will send you to me for this. Yeah, so it's just a really thorough sort of inspection of your um, the upper like quarter of your body. Okay, great. Um, it's not invasive, but I will be obviously touching you um, with my hands and fingernails. Is that okay? I'll make sure they're nice and sanitized. Okay. Alrighty. So, we have gone over what we're here for. Um, do you know, have you, when was the last time you were here actually? Just about a month ago. Okay. Alright, so has anything, any of your major information changed, such as your legal name, your uh, contact phone um, address, and email address? All still the same? Okay. Hmm. Alrighty. And did you have any questions about the actual procedure? Not really, okay. Well, if you come up with anything, just let me know. Feel free to ask as we go along anytime. And are you on any medications currently? Okay. All right. And have you been feeling fevered at all in the past couple of days? Or especially since your accident, but... I know it's been a little bit, so just in the past couple of days. Not really? Okay, good. I know once I hear the word flu, I feel like I always have a fever because I'm just... I don't enjoy the flu. <laughs> yeah. Who does? Okay. Um, so otherwise, have you been feeling in good health, sleeping well, eating decently, and drinking enough water? Okay. And of course, I always encourage you to do what you can in those areas since they are the most basic uh, building blocks of our health. Um, and yeah, I know you have a lot going on though, so don't worry about it. Okay. All right. So um, I guess without further ado, we'll get started. sanitizer. My hands here. I'm also going to try to just warm them up a little bit so that when I touch you, it's not shocking. Okay, so do you have a preference for where we start? We're going to do the throat area and along the sort of collarbone. We're going to do around your ears. So just sort of tapping around, checking out that whole area. Um, we're going to do the whole scalp, including the base of the neck. And then we're going to do your face as well, around your mouth, around your eyes. Okay. Typically, I just go with whatever the patient feels comfortable with. Some people don't like 
immediately being touched on their face. Uh, they like to kind of get warmed up first. And yeah, if people don't really have a preference though, I kind of just um, start around the forehead and work my way back down and end with the face, but okay. All right, sounds good. So we can do uh, ears first and then we'll do scalp and then work from there. Okay, great. So essentially all I'm gonna do right now is just kind of feel around the back of your ears and tapping just sort of lightly on your hairline and around. I'll look at this side now too, just make sure I'm getting everything. Does this feel okay on your ears? Okay. Just please let me know if I do um, end up doing anything that feels just unpleasant, weird, or of course hurtful. I will do my best to modify those movements um, or just find something that makes you comfortable. Okay. So you should feel a little bit of a sensation. You can feel that. not to feel when you have these nails on you. Okay, so I'm just gonna work around to sort of the front temple, a little bit beneath the temple above your ear, okay. Just using my two fingers here. Okay, and I'm gonna go back down around to the side to the back. I'm not feeling any bumpiness. Your skin, from what I can see, looks healthy. I don't see any cuts or bruises or uh, differences in your skin tone. Everything looks, you know, decently symmetrical as much as humans can be. And... I feel like you might have a little more sensitivity on your left side, it seems like. It seems like you're getting a little more relaxed there. Yeah, that can happen sometimes. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know it's in your file over there. Did you hit your head on your left or your right side? Okay. Because that could be something. All right, so let me make a quick note of that. Yours feel okay though overall. No strange sensations, no burning or itching. And what about any like pulsing, throbbing, something beneath the skin? so it still feels normal, um, your skin feels normal, and your sort of inner uh, body feels normal. You don't have any cramping, tightness, tenderness, anything like that. Okay, good. Just making sure. But you did say that the side you got hit on was your right side, correct? Yeah, so I am gonna I know it says that I'm just verifying. Um, I am going to make a note that you do seem to be a little more sensitive in your left ear, um, which could be an indication that the right side has had some some sort of um, damage to the system of your ear, or it could be a nerve situation, or um, could be a brain 
situation, uh, not sending the right signals, not firing the right synapses for the sensations that I am inducing, which is why it might feel different on one side than the other. So we definitely want that to be noted. Um, I actually don't have in your chart the reason why or, or what your cranial nerve exam uh, doctor expected from this or um, their reason for the follow-up specifically. Uh, they just said on my paperwork abnormality um, that they wanted to check as I was telling you. So I just want to make sure I don't leave anything unturned. Um, it's very possible that from birth that you've always had a difference, um, so it might not be related at all. I assume you've never had this test done before, so it's not like we have anything to measure against, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to move into the head now, okay? So this is almost kind of like a massage. I'm going to be using my nails to just scratch. So it's kind of going to feel like a light scratching sensation around your whole head, scalp, into the nape of your neck eventually. The reason why I'm doing this again, like tapping around your ears, um, this movement is allowing my fingers to just sort of, not grab, but slide slightly, gently around your head and make sure that, again, I don't feel any bumps, lumps, anything to be concerned about. Do you know if you have any tender spots on your head right now? Any acne, cuts, um, just anything that might be painful if I touched it? Okay, then if you're ready get started and I'll make sure to be gentle. Yeah, so you can kind of just relax and I'm going to just kind of scratch along and I'm going to get here by your hairline as well and just sort of smooth down these hairs that I'm feeling little peach buzz. Flatten all that out. Okay, and then get back to massaging here. good to me. And on the other side here, really not feeling anything that I feel like I need to be concerned about, which is great. And then I'm just going to slip my hand sort of underneath your neck and I'm going to tap at the base of your neck. So the nape of your neck is what it's called. I'm just going to put my arms around here and just tap. Get along that hairline base and into the lower neck. I feel like the back of the neck is such a smooth area. And it's almost 
vulnerable, I think, but we never really think about it, or I don't at least. I don't think I ever touch or give much attention to the back of my neck, but it feels good. you. Me too. Just gonna wrap around a little bit towards your ears too. Have you been able to relax much since you've been on the recovery road? Hmm. feel like we're behind. Okay, so that all felt normal. Okay, I'm just gonna make a note that I did um, feel some um, sort of scar tissue type feelings around your scar, which otherwise seems like it's healed very nicely. Sometimes when it's this early, um, after everything's healed and you can actually touch the area again, it can be a good idea to just give yourself a gentle massage in that area and it can help reduce the amount of scar tissue buildup that you have. So if you want your head to stay sort of um, smooth, if the bumps bother you at all, maybe you like them and that's totally fine. But if you did want to try to smooth them back out, if they're bothering you kind of thing, um, I'm not saying it'll be 100% effective, but it does help just to massage the area. So maybe you do it for small increments throughout the day, or you can just for maybe 15 minutes or so try to give a good deep massage and just enjoy it. Um, you can even do it in the shower while you're shampooing. Yeah. Two birds, one stone, right? Yeah, you're welcome. I'm not sure why they wouldn't tell you that. I think maybe it just doesn't cross people's mind at the time because it's still an open wound. Have you been for your follow-up yet with, um, with that doctor? Yeah. Maybe now that it's healed, um, more, they would tell you that, but, um, either way, to me, I think you're still in a good, sweet spot for that to be effective, so I would try it if it's something that you're interested in. Um, and you can also talk to your other doctor about it if you want to. You can call them, um, for a reference or just let them know next time you see them that, hey, uh, Dr. Elo said that I could do this and I've been doing it, um, and just to let them know in case they're like, wow, this healed really well. <laughs> Great. Or you can just pretend that that's your superpower. Okay. So next we are going to move into sort of the face, uh, area. Is that okay? So I'm just going to start around your forehead, and I apologize if you hear my nails kind of clinking together, that's just kind of what happens when they're long. Can you feel that? Okay, does it feel similar in 
pressure on both sides. You have a very nice jawline. I have a very round face, so that's something I always admire is a good jawline. Yeah. yeah. I think a round face can be really cute, but it also uh, can be a curse. <laughs> Especially when you're kind of on the smaller side. The second that I overeat for one meal, I have even more of a round face. Than... <laughs> yeah. It's alright though. I've learned to love it and just be okay with my chubby cheeks and soft jaw. <laughs> but yours is very nice. Does this feel pretty good? Okay. I want to go home. <laughs> Good. I'm not torturing you. Just feeling around now with some broader movement. up to your forehead. Good. Just kind of using my fingers to touch around your mouth. I'm not going to use my fingertips, kind of more the middle of my fingers because I want to feel more at a time. lips feel good and when I press and release the color kind of changes as we would expect. I feel like everywhere I'm tapping looks very responsive which is great and exactly what we want. Okay, good. For your face area, um, you didn't say, but did anything feel weird? Okay, I'm sorry, I just always have to ask to be sure. I know I, for one, am very, very shy, and sometimes I don't have the courage to speak up at first, but if someone asks me a direct question, it's a little easier to answer sometimes, so. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. I, I get a lot of patients who are just like me and don't speak up and then whenever I check in they have a lot to say so I always like to give people the opportunity. You know, everyone's different. Okay. But you seem to feel pretty firm that this is all feeling good and normal and how you remember. Okay. And throughout the process of me touching oh, around your face, um, everything felt normal in terms of, you didn't ever feel like I was pushing one side harder than the other side, right? No. Okay. Good. Because I was using an equal pressure, so what I was thinking is, you know, there's a chance that along your jawline on that, um, right side. You might have a little bit of that sensation that you're feeling, lack, I should say, of sensation that you're feeling when we were doing your ears. Um, I wanted to just know if that was transferring down into your jaw. Yeah, yeah, we can do that again just to make sure. 
And you know I will keep a uh, close sort of guard on that side. So we'll stick with your right side. I'm going to feel around your ear and your jaw. And I can kind of talk you through as I'm going. So right now I'm just going to touch around the outside of your ear a little bit more. And so you say this feels different than on this side. I do them both. Okay. So it's just a little bit of reduced sensation around the ear. Yeah. It's normal for it to feel like the sensation is almost in your ear. And then uh, if you're not getting that, that deep of a feeling on the one side, that, that is definitely a difference. Yeah, you're not crazy. Okay, so then if I press now here to the sides of your jaws, this is what I was wondering. So on your right side, if I press right here on both sides, does that feel the same? Okay, now you have a little notch right here. It's a pressure point. I'm not going to push it really hard, but I am going to just push in on both sides and just tell me, does that feel the same too? Okay, okay, good. Um, that's really all we need to do to double check that. I, if it's not going that far, it's not going to be um, elsewhere in your jaw. That was really the main sort of nerve uh, that could have been feeling some of that or receiving some of that. Yeah. So that's actually really good news because it means that if there is damage, if this is not just something you were born with, then it's clearly been isolated to the ear area, which of course we don't want anything to be wrong with your ears, but thank goodness it's not more than that, <laughs> right? Have, have you been to um, have an ear test? Have you been to an audiologist or ear, nose, and throat doctor or anything? Yeah. I think that that would be the next logical step would be to um, find some good ear doctors, find one that you like a lot, and have them look into your hearing. Um, we're not done, but of course I'm going to give this report um, to your doctor. And yeah, I think that would be my recommendation that I'm also going to give to you and to them. Um, you're always welcome to get a hearing test on your own. If your other doctor says everything's fine and you still want to look into this, um, that's something that you're more than welcome to uh, schedule for yourself as well. And yeah, that could help figure it out. I actually know a couple really nice and professional audiologists who I'd love to um, refer you to if you are interested in that. So. You can call me and let me know. Okay. Or I can actually um, even give you a card to take home with you today. If you want with some of their names is all. Okay. All right. Good deal. Uh, we still have to do the throat area. Not off the hook yet. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now is just kind of feel from your jawline where we just were down and we're going to kind of go to the collarbone uh, just make sure that there's no kind of refractory pain or anything that we need to worry about uh, but we'll start with the jaw yep okay so it's just going to be actually like right below the jaw on the throat this area here okay so I'm just going to tap this area on both sides and just feel down and underneath your chin another very smooth area I 
I guess it's just the places that we don't really talk, uh, touch a lot that have like that soft facial skin. <laughs> Understanding is that like pretty much the skin from your throat, everything and your head is kind of a little different, a little less coarse and just genetically or cellularly, I don't know, I'm not that kind of doctor, but just different from the rest of your skin on your body, which can be a bit thicker and more able to withstand trauma and all that do what we need to do. Does this feel okay down into your throat? Okay. And here at the base, I'm just going to take and tap across your collarbone now, sort of out. Okay. Good. Did you injure anything other than your head when you fell? Any bones or... So just muscle, not that that's not serious, but it was your back muscles. And how is that recovery going? Oh good, okay, I'm glad. Back pain is miserable. Okay. Good, that feels really good um, to me. How did it feel to you? Good? Okay. Hooray, that's so exciting. neck and collarbone. Okay. And you don't feel any pain. Tenderness. Okay. And what about itchiness or any sort of burning? Okay, good. Alright. And not feel any lumps or bumps or anything at all um, to worry about. Sometimes people will get these little cyst-like feeling things um, around the site of their injury uh, and I didn't feel any of those anywhere on your entire scalp, face, neck, uh, back of your neck, nothing. Yeah, so that's excellent. Okay, so I think that we've been through uh, pretty much everything on our list here. We've examined and tapped and touched all of the, and massaged I should say, uh, as well all of the areas that um, could have been affected according to your cranial nerve exam doctor. Yeah. Did you have any questions about anything? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we do have a dedicated sort of therapeutic massage parlor here at Quake Clinic. Um, you can absolutely go there anytime you want. Since you're one of our patients, it's one of those things that's just included with your being a patient here. Um, so there's no copay, there's no deductible insurance, nothing like that. It's just a complimentary service um, that you get as a patient here. Um, I was gonna say client, but that feels so clinical and weird. <laughs> um, anyway, so we have everything that we need for you with this, but if you did want to go and get another massage on your head, your face, your, um, like, really any area, we can handle all of it. Um, they have specific sessions that are dedicated to certain areas of the body if you want to specify ahead of time or book a very specific appointment. Um, but otherwise, you can go in for a full body massage if you wanted to. It does not have to be related to your accident. Yep. 
Yeah, so if you liked the way that the head massage felt, for example, you can go in, get a head massage, or book something different. Okay. Um, in terms of your question about the audiologists, um, that's, there's no real timeline on that, so if you're not feeling sure about what you want to do yet, um, I completely understand that. There's no pressure at all. Um, I'm sure that I'll see you again, and uh, if we don't have an appointment around when you're interested in going to the audio audiologist, you can just call up here, um, and I will gladly give you those names anytime. Okay. All right. Well, I think that you are uh, good to go. Um, you look in good health, so I hope that you are feeling well and recovering still, and, uh, back to 100% soon. Mm -hmm. I will forward all this information to your doctor today, and hopefully you'll hear from their office uh, as soon as they figure out what's going on, or if they have any more questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you won't hear from our office necessarily, but you should hear from theirs. Okay. Alright, great. Well, it was so good to see you. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day and night. As you know, here at Quake Clinic, um, if you want to, you can stay and relax. Uh, you can sleep in the bed here in this room. Everything's fresh and clean. Uh, we've got a mini bar with snacks and drinks and all that. Everything's complimentary. So just take your time. Um, and when you feel adjusted and ready, you are welcome to exit. Alright, great. Well, we will see you next time then.